uh, this week we've been talking about who is in control of your destiny. And uh, Pastor Tim came so powerfully on Monday and Q taught yesterday. And so I'll be teaching today about who is in control of your eternal destiny. Uh, please forgive me. I might not be able to see who's watching, but just go ahead and let us know exactly where you're watching from. I have a poor connection here. So if you can help me with that, uh, it'd really be much appreciated. Uh, I am coming to you literally on the side of the road, somewhere in Cape Town. Uh, so won't you go ahead, just let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we are talking about who's in control of your eternal destiny. Really, uh, we need to teach about these things because we need to know what is it that's God's responsibility and what is it that's our responsibility. Uh, because we cannot go through life living, you know, automatically, you know, just because we are born again, everything will happen by itself. It doesn't work like that. Uh, I mean, the Bible itself says, or God says, uh, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. You see, God took the first step of choosing you. He took the first step of giving Jesus, well, his only son for your salvation. Uh, but then we have a responsibility to make the decision to accept Jesus, number one. Uh, number two, to every day choose to live for him. But I'll get into that a bit more in detail just now. Uh, let me see if I can see who's watching. Just need one second. Okay, never mind that. So I'm going to go straight into the message today. Uh, I'm going to base it on these two scriptures, which is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, and Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Uh, but before I get into that, I just want to say this. Uh, there are three kinds of people in the church or in earth that we can find. Person number one is the, you know, the defeated. You know, there are those people who live their lives, you know, defeated. It doesn't matter what scripture you quote to them, uh, what encouragement. Uh, they just defeated man and they just go through life as defeated and there's just no victory in anything that they do there's no victory in their in their emotional life in their finances in their family and they're quite okay to live life like that and second group of people is the militant people you know those people who feel like it's their responsibility to fight the enemy they feel like it's the the devil to to, to, to really stomp the devils and, and make sure that Satan is in his place. You know, the, the militant people, they, they fight everything. And they feel like it's their responsibility to fight. And the last group of people is the triumphant group. You know, people who really acknowledge what Jesus has done for them on the cross and take their responsibility. Not to just relax and say, you know, I've won and so I can relax, but to appropriate, you know, what Jesus has done on the cross. And, 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 and the, the, the outworking working of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So those are the three kinds of people. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, uh, For his divine power has bestowed upon us absolutely everything that's necessary for life and godliness. Through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his excellence. Now I need to say this before I continue. All three of these people have one thing in common. And that is the fact that they made a decision to live their life the way they do. You know, we need to make a decision. It's not going to happen by itself. We need to decide who's in control. We need to decide what's my responsibility and what's God's responsibility. So, uh, Second Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything that's necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. You see, God has given us every tool that we need to pursue a godly life. But one of the most key tools that, that is given us is the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit in our lives as the, as, as the bystander or in, in Greek, the, the, the paraclete, the person who walks with us every single day. You know, God has given us the Holy Ghost to live, to be able to live our lives. You know, uh, it, it, I mean, I'm sitting in a car now and it has power steering. The power steering in this car makes the steering of the car so much easier. I mean, I've driven a car without power steering and it's a workout. So God has given us the Holy Spirit in our lives for us to 
live a godly life with so much ease because the Holy Spirit is there to guide us. The Bible says he guides you into all truth. So everything that you need to know for that moment, for that specific situation, the Holy Spirit is there to guide you, to give you a bit of a nudge. Go left, no, go right. You know, but we need to make a decision. Every single day when you wake up that today I choose to live for God. Today I choose for my thoughts to be aligned with the with the word of God, with the will of God. I choose to live in holiness, you know, in my mind, in my actions and everything that I do. It's a decision that we need to make. You see, God is not going to do that for you. God is not going to live your life for you. You living your life you know, for you through him. And he gives you all the empowerment. He gives you all the tools by his divine power. That's what the Bible says. He's given you everything that you need for life and godliness. All the tools that you need, you already have. But God is not going to do it for you. You do it for you. It's your responsibility. Uh, second, excuse me, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 in the NLT. It's, uh, the NLT writes it so beautifully. Uh Apostle Paul says here, dear friends, you always followed my instruction when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Listen to this. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. It says work hard to show the results of your salvation. You see, you need to work hard. You see, in your life, it grows. And what you do not work out, it dies. Ultimately, which is the same with your salvation. If you do not work out your salvation every single day, it dwindles, it dies. You know, your relationship with God needs to be worked out every single day. You work it out. You make a decision that today I'm going to live for God. I mean, the Apostle Paul talks about this, that I crucify my flesh every single day. You die daily. You wake up in the morning and choose that today God... Uh, I will not gratify. That's what the Bible says, that walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So when you wake up early in the morning, you say this, that God, today I choose to walk by the Spirit. I choose to, to live by the Spirit. I choose for my mind and my thoughts and my actions today to represent who you are, to represent uh, the, just the outworking of the Holy Spirit in my life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And that's what God wants us to do, to make that decision every single day, to live for him, to make that decision every single day, to, to live a life that represent who, represents who he is. I want to do something today. I want to pray for someone today who, who feels like they've been misaligned, you know, with, with, with regards to this. Yes, they are born again, uh, but they have been living life autonomously and their Christianity is not as or in a place where it's supposed to be. We've answered the question today, who's in control of your eternal destiny? God has done everything that he needed to do for you to access, you know, your eternal destiny with him. But it's your decision to appropriate that in your life. And that begins by accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But it doesn't end there. It's deciding every single day, not only to be born again but to live for him every single day crucify your flesh and allow the holy spirit to to really guide you and lead you and be led by the holy spirit and i want to pray also for someone who maybe they've not yet made the decision to follow jesus and you're not saved or you're not really sure exactly where you belong i want you to say this prayer after me say lord jesus come into my life save my soul today today i make a decision to follow you. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Help me live a godly life, a life that is fashioned after you. I accept you into my heart and I declare that I am born again. I'm a child of God and my eternal destiny is secured in you. I thank you for dying for me on the cross, Jesus. And I declare today that I am saved. My encouragement today really is just decide to live for God. Decide for your life to be led by him every single day. So who's in control of your eternal destiny? Well, you are. 
you know, God has given you everything. He's done everything he needs to do. He's given you the Holy Spirit. I mean, how much more can he give? He's given his son and now he's giving you himself. God in you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. That means we, we cannot, we do not lack anything. We've got everything that we need. And that's the beauty about it. That it's up to us, but it, you know, the Holy Spirit just makes it so easy, you know, to live for God. And, and, and I really trust that you are blessed by that. Uh, go back Monday, uh, uh, Pastor Tim shared powerfully and listen to Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday with, with Q yesterday and go through this and really may the Holy Spirit just minister to your heart and may you just come to a place where you make that decision to take responsibility and apply, you know, uh, everything that God has given you. And I trust that you are blessed by that. Zama is coming to you tomorrow morning and please go ahead and share this. Uh, take someone that you know. Uh, interact and yeah may the lord bless you and thank you so much for always tuning in we love you guys and we'll see you again tomorrow god bless